Now, with my two-hour winless streak on stream recently, you might not think that I'm the best person to be giving you football manager tips. However, I'm here to change your opinions and I'm here to blow your mind. Yes, I'm going to be giving you five ultimate tips here, which I've broken down into smaller little tips throughout this video. We also have a sponsor for today's video, but more on them later on. We're going to look at the first tip right now, the importance of team cohesion and tactical familiarity. Now, if we're looking at tactical familiarity, we can see here when you look at our tactics screen, you have this little thing which pops up another little box, tells you more about the tactic and how much your team knows about this tactic. If you have been using this for a longer period of time and used in training, then you will know a little bit more about it. Also, of course, player roles become very specific in player position. There's no good me playing Thiago Almeida at left back because he's not a good left back. His preferred role is in there however I am playing him out on the wing on support he might not be as familiar however we can still grow this no matter what and the, to be honest the quickest way of growing this and it really bugs me that football manager has changed this recently because in the last game this was here already for you is on your training schedule so if you go to calendar and take a look maybe a, a little bit down the line you will see that after each game you get a recovery session now on last year's game you also if you click on here you also manage to get match reviews and if you look at a match review it gives you basically by clicking on it it tells you what it basically does the primary focus for all of the players is tactical familiarity bright green there mentality the passing style that you're trying to create with your tactic creative freedom pressing marking temple with everything like that it also increases your team cohesion it has no effect on fatigue whatsoever no effect on match fitness no effect on anything no negative effects but they do not give you this unless you insert it yourself so please 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 first and foremost make sure you're putting a match review after every single game you are playing especially if you've just recently changed your tactic Let's think about team cohesion. If you go to dynamics, you get a brief overview here of team cohesion. My team cohesion is only good. I'm not a very good manager. If you can look down here on the issues, we have a lot of issues with players that I have failed to correct their promises. Also something, please do not try and do what I do and never loan players out when they ask, never bring in good coaching staff when they say to do that. I'm a very terrible coach. This team cohesion will actually affect your job performance because if your players are unhappy, they play worse, which means the club atmosphere goes down, which means the manager support goes down, which means you could be out of a job very soon, which somehow I don't know how I've avoided this on my Twitch save. If you look at your social groups, you get an understanding of who's friendly with who, and mine right now is not very good. I've got a few who aren't in social groups, but it does also give you feedback on those social groups. Everything else seems to be quite positive. It even gives you recommended players who would fit in your social groups if you use that. Did you know about that? Because I didn't until today. I didn't know about that today, I'll be honest. Learning about the hierarchy as well, the team leaders. If you're going to sell your team leaders, that could kick up a bit of a fuss. And as well as happiness. Look on this page. It tells you basically who is unhappy and gives you the reason why. Why most players are very happy. They seem to be absolutely fine. All of this is available and all of this helps your team cohesion, which obviously helps your tactical familiarity as well. Like playing players out of position, that kind of thing. Changing your tactic around too much is what something that I've been at fault for as well please do not do this tactical familiarity team cohesion very important if you want success the second tip we have today is to learn and use the best custom views and filters if we can have a look here at the squad view that I have loaded this is a custom squad view however I've added and changed one thing before there was an injury risk here and I never really knew what to do about it a lot of the time I'd be picking players with high injury risk and they never really get injured however recently I've changed this to fatigue and this has been so much better for me because it gives you an idea when you get to the game who actually needs a rest it's all well and good seeing this condition thing this gives you a brief overview of their match fitness and everything like that again overall risk of injury normal but it gives you fatigue down the bottom, very little fatigue. Now, I would normally play a player if he's my best player, if he has a good natural, if he if he has a good heart, like as you can see here, it, it, he looks fine. But I wouldn't play him if his fatigue was low. But this one is fine. He has very little fatigue. He's in a good condition. He's fine. He's fine. He's absolutely able to play. I might have to take him off before other players. But if that fatigue was different, 
then I might change him. And by filters, I mean things such on your scouting filters. Now you can use this for other things as well, I guess. But if you go onto new search here, you've got the ability to click this arrow. It gives you so much more information that you could possibly want. Now I am in uh, Italy right now and I am struggling to find players who are not non-EU. So if I take a look at EU national, here we go. Now this gets rid of all of the players which I won't be able to play if I sign them because they are non-EU internationals and I can only register a certain amount per year. So now I've clicked that, it will only give me players who I can potentially, who I can actually use using this filter. Also, you could, there's so many other options on here that you can have a look at. Minimum fee release clauses is a big one that I like to use at the end of uh, the start of every season because people sign contracts, people sign weird contracts. And if you take a look at clauses on releases, you can see here minimum fee release clause. Once you're a few seasons in, you'll be surprised at how many players you can pick up for quite a cheap price just by going to this menu and selecting like 25 million pound, for example. We go to 30 million pound. There might be a few players who have signed recent deals, which at the start of the game was no, was not on release clause, uh, minimum fee release clause contracts. They might now be on those contracts. They might be bang in form or have a really high value and you can actually pick them up for more for less sorry than what they're actually valued this guy is 17 million has release cost 24 million if he plays better throughout the season he might be worth more than that he might be a player i want to pick up the other thing that i think is quite impressive with using filters is if you are using attribute masking now attribute masking of course means that you cannot see players attributes which means you have to scout them a little bit more before you know exactly what that player is about however before you've done that maybe you can narrow your search engine down a little bit by clicking on this going on to add condition now i've got defenders marked up here so if i take a look at aerial challenges maybe headers one ratio and let's take a look uh, at least let's see then i want to know whether a player at center back has won at least 80 percent of his headers one ratio so we've got a few here ben godfrey james karkowski will uh, wesley fofana all three really good players what about we go a little bit higher and see maybe 85 86 has any are there any of them still around after this no it's a diop is though and if we take a look at it's a diop is he the option that i want he's six foot four he has 17 jumping reach but i won't be able to see any of his attributes if i had attribute masking on so i wouldn't know whether it's a diop is a very good player or not all i would be able to see is he's six foot four but what i would know is that he potentially is really good at jumping reach and he's probably really good at heading and has decent strength because by this i have headers one ratio at 86 percent he is higher than a lot of the defenders we had on this list now the third tip that i have for you here is to take the time to save yourself money now i have two examples that i love to use on this and that's one of them we start off here in a contract negotiation with my goalkeeper if you're trying to extend their contracts or offer them a new contract you'll get this page to begin with once you select off new contract now usually people will just click finalize promises and get on with it however two very simple clicks and it happens every single time if you just simply click end of season if you're going to offer him more money you're going to be saving a hell of a lot of money if i'm at the very start of the season or midway through the season you won't have to be paying in that much until the end of the season when the new season kicks in and that new contract kicks in as well so for example if you've got a youngster in your club who's on a very minimal wage say like four thousand pound but you know once you offer them a new deal they're going to be wanting fifty thousand sixty thousand if you had put end of the season he will more than likely still accept that and yet you'll save yourself 25 50 grand whatever it is uh, extra per week throughout the rest of the season until you get to that point where his new contract will kick in so for example you can you can even try and remove this and exclude it and whether he accepts that he does see he still accepts that so the end of the season and i took an off that average wage malarkey whatever it is if i go to negotiate contract originally it was above for above 60 grand now he only wants 49k uh if i took like my existing deal he's only on 26 so to be honest it's not too bad at all he's gone from 26k to about 46 it's not a lot of money considering he wanted above 60 grand beforehand and we would have been paying that straight away if you did that to every single player you offer a contract to you'll save yourself a lot of money going forward another example is if you're going to sign a player now i have just randomly put in a bid for this random player uh, who was on the transfer list but let's ignore it you can get rid of all of this if you like these are the promises of course and if you don't do the promises then they get really annoyed with you and end up wanting to leave your club go to negotiate 
negotiated contract, if you take a look at here, now this guy's quite a bad example, to be honest, because he doesn't have a lot of clauses that they want extra, but how some, however, sometimes, like if you want team of the years in there, uh, clean sheet bonuses, you can go through and get rid of every single one if you want and just offer him a little bit more money. And what it basically will do, there you go, he accepted it, and I probably overdid it, to be honest. If you take out all of those clauses and then offer him just slightly more money, chances are you'll end up saving money in the long run. You won't be just forking out loads of money for clean sheet bonuses, team of the year bonuses. Every time he hits an international game, you have to give him a pay rise or give him a hundred grand randomly. Take them all out, offer him just slightly a little bit more money. Chances are they will accept your bid. And now a word from our sponsors. Now I have partnered up with Ultimate Fans, which is a great app for all of you pack opening or fantasy football fans like myself, because it's both of those things. Not to mention, it is completely free to play and you have a chance to win cash prizes of up to 125,000 pound for free. You can even win the money once the Euros has already started. If you click the link below in my description, it will take you straight to the app where you can open your free pack to try and win some money for yourselves like I'm going to do right now. Okay, so I've just signed up for the app. This is my first pack. So swipe to open. There we go. Uh, wow, Brozovic. So that's a good one straight away because he's starter for Croatia, of course. A fantastic player. So that's great. We have the Spain team card. Now that's great. We know Spain's going to do fairly decent to say the least. Uh, Pieter Tukowski, defender for Poland. They've been quite decent. I can see a Ukraine player there. Yes, right, Ukraine player. I'm excited about that. Ben Davies, uh, Gregorich. I've seen him play a few times in the Bundesliga. Fantastic player. Uh, Spinozola, already has been tearing up the Euro, so that's a fantastic player to have. Di Lorenzo, I think, is his substitute compatriot, or he actually plays on the other wing, to be fair. Uh, so that's great. Pellegrini. The Italians are coming in, and I've just watched Italy batter uh, Switzerland, so that's great. And Kiefer Moore, who's a starting player for Wales. So, so far, that is a very good pack opening. So you can build your team around this then, which is quite good. So this is the team that I'm going to line up for this, but I'm actually going to go because there is a paid subscription version, the gold version. I'm going to show you how beneficial that actually is and increase your chances of winning this money. So I bought the gold pack viewers. And the best thing about this is that now when I watch the Euros, I have some other teams to support where my players are playing. So Dayan Lovren. Uh, Eden Hazard, yes please, fantastic player, hopefully because he's been out all season, he actually plays and we have a chance and we have Bobby Dofsky, Robert Lewandowski, what a player that is, so that's three really good players to get right there. So there we have it then, this is my team going forward and it looks a lot better now that I've gone with the gold pack because Robert Lewandowski, Eden Hazard and Brozovic as my front three, that is scary, so hopefully I can score some points potentially win some money and you can do too link down in the description now you must be over 18 to do this and you must be in the uk or ireland unfortunately i know everybody would want to have a go at this but if you are matching those description link down in the description support the channel by supporting that link and have some fun during the euros using ultimate fans right we have two more tips for you though starting off with understanding how the game mechanics work now, what you need to remember is that this is a video game. After all, as immersive as Football Manager really is, and I really like to dive into this myself and believe that I am the manager of this club and these players are my players as much as I'd like for it to happen, this is just a video game. There are set ways that clearly work better than others in every scenario, whether it be in the match engine or outside of actually playing the game. And unfortunately, the game isn't intelligent enough to adapt to, to maybe park the bus low block tactic. For example, in your game, there's just certain ways of tactics which work like positive and attacking tactics. If you go defensive in your tactics, chances are you'll probably concede more, which is quite ironic. That's just how the game works. And I'm going to give you a few examples of this. Player development is a big one. Of course, we all know that determination used to be what everybody used to focus on. However, now we know a little bit more about the game mechanics itself. SI have told us a little bit more about it, and it's more based on the hidden attributes of the game of a player 
rather than that determination which we all used to crave. Yes, determination is still good, and yes, it can, it can still help your development. I'm not saying it doesn't. However, it is not the main factor which does. There are such things such as professionalism, which is actually a hidden attribute which defines how much the player trains and how professional he is about his day-to-day -day business, as well as training, playing performances, and actually developing as a player themselves. Ambition is another one. Ambition can be seen as a negative side of things because unless you're one of the biggest clubs in the world, he may be too ambitious for your club. He may use your club as a stepping stone or want more money. He wants to become the biggest thing in football. That's something to be uh, debated with at another time. But also with player development, like if you don't have the best facilities, if we take a look at club information here, we have great youth facilities, great training facilities. Maybe it is the difference between one of my players going from 190 a current ability to 200 current ability if he had that potential. We don't quite know the ax the absolute numbers, but we do know that training facilities, whether it be great or state of the art, obviously plays some kind of effect, whether it's just a time frame or whether it's a limitation, a ceiling that will make that player never be able to reach a certain potential or a time frame like I mentioned, meaning that player won't be able to reach that potential in one year, it may take three, for example. Such things as professionalism as well, I have heard from other sources, now don't quote me on this, but if you offer a young player big money, like offer them huge money, their professionalism can actually drop by five because they think they've made it, which I've seen on an SI forum. Now, this obviously has detrimental effects to their development because if their professionalism lowers by five, that's quite high. If their professionalism was only 15, it's now 10. Chances are they're not actually going to reach their full potential. You've basically just killed their development by offering them a little bit more money to try and entice them to come to your club rather than somebody else's. Now, another part of the game mechanics is, of course, the player attributes. There is a reason why certain players who have nowhere near as good current ability as others perform better because the game match engine works differently to certain attributes. An example I can give you really is there's a reason why Victor Asiman there's a reason why Victor Asiman tends to score a lot more goals than Robert Lewandowski. I mean, we can see Robert Lewandowski is clearly a better player. And in real life, of course, he's clearly a better player. He obviously has a higher current ability. He has 20 finishing, great mental attributes compared to Victor Asiman. And if we go to compare Victor Asiman here, we can see how superior Robert Lewandowski is in every single front other than one aspect of his game, and that is speed. And unfortunately for Robert Lewandowski, Oski speed is very overpowered in Football Manager. Now, I'm not saying that speed is the be-all and end-all and that in every save game file, you will find Robert Lewandowski scoring less goals than Victor Asiman. I'm just saying on a general consensus, majority of the time I see Victor Asiman just smacking goals in for fun and Robert Lewandowski scoring a good amount, but never the amount that you would see him doing in real life, for example. And I really do feel like speed is a big factor in that. And I've actually got a video coming out very soon which goes over all of the attribute groups and shows you which one is the most important so if that one's come out already make sure you go check it out because the results are actually very surprising another part of the game mechanics which you might be more aware of than what you actually realize is how have you ever tried to sign a player and they want ridiculous wages I'm talking like 150 grand and you're like I'm never gonna pay that money so you decline to carry on then you see that exact player sign for another club you click on him and he is signed for wages of like half the price that he was trying to request when you tried to sign him. Now that could be down to some game mechanics because your reputation might be a lot lower than whatever reputation of the club he is signed for. Meaning that this player sees your club as a downgrade compared to the other one and the only way he wants to join you is if he is going to make bank and make a lot of money. That actually makes sense in real life terms. So the example of this being a video game, you have to take in consideration this being a video game but also it's kind of realistic too you don't see many players going to, to terrible clubs unless they are being given a big hefty wage and going to China Russia those types of places that's when you can see that that really actually is realistic now my final tip for you today is probably my favorite one and probably the one that I do the most and that is to make money not lose money with your transfers 
Now it sounds a bit obvious, right? But it's obviously better to try and sign the next best thing rather than the guy when it comes to Football Manager with two similar players. One is slightly better, but it's probably 10 to 15 million pound more because they're in the prime of their career. Maybe he's like 28 years of age. But the other one's 21, he's not quite there yet, but he has the potential to be, if not as good or better than the player that you have the other option to buy. And you might think, no, I'm going to go for that player, he's the better player. However, chances are you're going to be ripped off, chances are you're going to pay a bigger wage, and chances are you're not going to get that money back if you do a long-term save and you decide to sell that player. All I'm saying is basically think about the player you're signing before you sign them. Is there a cheaper option who you can grow into that player and maybe make a little bit of money or save a little bit of money down the line. Another side to look at this is if your player is in their late 20s and you start getting insane bids, maybe that is the last chance that you have to make money on that player. That might be the last opportunity if you decline that, they're on another year of their contract, they're also 29.30, the value dips quite often and then you'll be finding yourself thinking, why didn't I sell him last year? Because now the bids are coming in a quarter of what they were the season before and you're trying to offload him. Maybe no one's taken him because of his wages are too high now. That could be a big problem. And of course, probably the most obvious concept of this tip basically is scouting countries like Uruguay, Colombia, Argentina, the African nations as well. Sometimes even Eastern Europe where you can find these players who are very cheap because they're at clubs who don't have the best world reputation but they are one of the best clubs at producing wonder kids. And I did a big video on like the new Brazil because there's a certain country which has just so many clubs who produce good players compared to Brazil and I looked at the analytics and the statistics in the pre-game editor on what helps you produce wonder kids. Now, scouting these countries and picking these players up for one to two million pound allows you to begin flipping players for profits. Now, an explanation of flipping players basically means if I'm going to sign this player for two million pound, I may never play this player. I may know when I'm signing him that I'm never going to play this player. And I do this so often, for example, in the youth to go concept that so many people now has taken on themselves and enjoy doing. I will sign that player. I will loan them out because then their wages also get paid for as long as possible and they're good because they're getting better player development, they're playing more games and then I can flip in for a profit one or two years later when one of the big European clubs come in and go, hey, I really want to use that player. He's been in form or we think he has good potential. I'm going to offer you £20 million. After a season of only being at my club, even though he's been out on loan and I've only signed him for £2.4 million, I never have any intention of using him. He's never going to be as good as the starting players that I have, but I'm going to make £18 million in just a year from him. That is the total definition of making money in your transfers. The youth to gold concept is so good at doing that. It's the reason why in Holstein Kiel I had like £500 million in the bank and a £300 million transfer budget at the end with nobody to spend it on. There we have it then. Those are my five tips for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you use them. And if they're beneficial for you, let me know down in the comments and smash a like button. And thank you, of course, to today's sponsor, Ultimate Fan. Remember, guys, the link is down in the description. Mixing FIFA Ultimate Team Pack openings with like fantasy football, that's a good combination. I'm very glad to be partner up with with these guys make sure you support them down in the description i'll see you again on another video very soon in the future cheers guys bye bye